In this lesson, we are going to go beyond Hadoop and we'll start talking about big data ecosystem or also called as friends of Hadoop. In this lesson, you'll learn several terms which will help you to understand the big data lingo. Here is a slide which gives a comprehensive view of the overall Hadoop ecosystem. There are several components which were created after the original Hadoop and they help to make this ecosystem a much more scalable and a robust solution on any big data solution. Let's get started with the bottom one which is HDFS. HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. In Hadoop, data is stored in the storage layer and it's stored across different machines in a distributed fashion. Hence it is called as distributed. And all the data which is brought in Hadoop is going to be stored as a file format. That's why the term Hadoop Distributed File System. The next important component is MapReduce, which helps in processing this data and getting some valuable results. MapReduce was the original pro processing engine. Later we had version 2, which is highlighted here as V2 and also called as YARN, which is the resource management technique called as YAT, another resource negotiator. It provides a better resource management technique. This was part of the combination of change when Hadoop changed from Hadoop 1 to Hadoop 2. These two blocks play an important role in defining Hadoop at the storage and processing layer. The rest of the blocks were created later and helped these two to be more successful. Before we move to the next block, we need to understand that Hadoop does not create data. It's not the creator of data. Usually data has been created in some other system and that has been brought into Hadoop. For that to happen, we need some mechanisms which can help us to get data into Hadoop and that's where the vertical two blocks of Scoop and Flume come into picture. Scoop is a mechanism to get data from relational databases like Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, etc. It not only acts as a mechanism to get data into Hadoop, but can, it can also be used to get data out of Hadoop into any relational system. Scoop has an import and export utility, which helps us to do this two-way bridge. The word Scoop is created by the combination of two words, SQL plus Hadoop. The SQ part comes from SQL, and the OOP parts from, comes from Hadoop. But most of the data which are brought into Hadoop may not be really relational data or structured data. The power of Hadoop really comes with unstructured data. And to help get the unstructured data into Hadoop, we have a mechanism called as Flume, which is also called as Log Collector, which helps us to get semi-structured, unstructured format of data. Typically, when you go to a website, all the clicks on your actions on the website are recorded in something called as click stream, which is finally fed into a log file. And Flume is a mechanism which can help us get those logs from that log file into a Hadoop kind of format, Hadoop distributed file system, HDFS. Here a word of caution, the Flume is one of such mechanisms to get ingestion of unstructured data. There are many techniques or alternatives like Kafka, Talend, Spark Streaming and several other applications which have been built later to do similar kind of application. And for that matter, many of these block, what I call as are examples or representative set. So they are the open source version of that one particular need or functionality. It can also be met by some other tools similarly. Moving forward, let's talk about Hive. Why was Hive created in the first place? Hive was created to make Hadoop easy. MapReduce is written in Java and Java may be a complicated language for most of the people. But a lot of the people understand SQL, 
they are able to write SQL queries, select star from certain table. Business users, end users, data analysts, and most of the user community understand SQL. Hence, there was a need of creating such a language or a high level API which could write SQL on the top and indirectly internally produce the MapReduce job. That's exactly what Facebook did when they created Hive and open source to the rest of the world. Thus, Hive can be considered as a high level language or a wrapper on top of MapReduce. Another search language is Pig. Pig was created by Yahoo and serves somewhat similar proce process. The purpose of Pig is also to provide a high level API which can be written in English kind of a language using words like filter, sort, etc. and help to really run MapReduce jobs. So when somebody writes a Pig script, it internally produces a MapReduce job, making life easier for the developer and he doesn't have to write a MapReduce job himself. The next block, Mahout, stands for machine learning component in the open source world. Mahout provides several APIs which can help us to write machine learning algorithms and can be used in conjunction with big data informations. This particular tool along with the next one R connectors are highly used by data scientist community. They use these two techniques to either do machine learning and R is used extensively for statistical and mathematical calculations. It can be incorporated with big data to really make some very useful solutions for the users. Moving to the next blocks, next three blocks we are going to talk are most focused for the administrator of the system who creates Hadoop clusters and they need a mechanism to do that. Ambari is the open source mechanism to really create a cluster, provision it, manage it and monitor the clusters. For example, if you want to add a node to your cluster, it can be done through Ambari. Again, there are other tools where other distributions like Cloudera provides Cloudera Manager to do similar functionality. The next tool is Zookeeper. As you may have noticed, the slide has already created a zoo with elephant, a pig, a bee and so on and so forth. If you have a zoo, you need a Zookeeper. Zookeeper is a mechanism which helps us to really perform coordination and synchronization between these tools and components. Last, the administration list is Uzi. Uzi provides a comprehensive mechanism to really be able to schedule jobs. In a Hadoop ecosystem, you would typically write several Hive, Pig, MapReduce jobs and you want to run them on a scheduled basis one after the other as per the requirement. That can be written through a cron job by yourself but a more sophisticated and easier option would be really to do Uzi which is provided as a Hadoop ecosystem tool to perform a much cleaner workflow and scheduling mechanism. Last on the list is HBase. HBase again is more of a representative set for all kinds of NoSQL databases which are potentially possible. HBase is one of the open source and early versions but there are many NoSQL databases like Cassandra, MongoDB, DynamoDB, Couchbase, etc. HBase is also a columnar databases. Instead of rows, data is structured into form of columns and it sits on top of HDFS providing a reference to the HDFS data. It's very tightly integrated with HDFS. So with that, you see a high level overview of the various components in the Hadoop ecosystem. Let's quickly recap. Looking in a different way, we have components in green which are providing the capability of storage, HDFS and HBase. Then we have several processing capabilities highlighted in the center 
yellow which are MapReduce and several of the high-level APIs like Hive, Pig, Mahout, R connectors, etc. We need ingestion mechanisms to get data into Hadoop and that's where the blue who columns of Scoop and Flume are helping us to do that. Finally, we have administrators who use Ambari, Zookeeper and Uzi systems to really create a robust big data solution.